Joost. Mm -hmm. Hey Joost, had some rain? Yeah, pretty much. Welcome in the Rebel Conversion Webshop. I told you about my dream car and uh, in the Rebel Workshop I'm going to tell you exactly how we made it. Let's start with the batteries. The first big pack is here. You see, it's uh, specially designed for this uh, T2. Here, a forklifter can lift the pack. Here in the back is about 25 kilowatt hours of uh, lithium battery. This pack only is enough for 20, 120 kilometers. Okay. Okay, one of the most important things for the driving ability of the car is the weight balance. Therefore, we've specially designed the second big battery pack for this uh, Volkswagen bus. It's about 30 kilowatt hours because in total the car has now 56 kilowatt hours of lithium battery. We choose to uh, connect the cells two parallel and 88 serial. So 88 serial means that the soliton controller is still able to handle the total voltage. In total we have 176 cells. Um, the BMS system, what you see here, is connected in also two by two. So per two cells we have voltage and temperature, temperature measurement continuously. And that's shown on a little screen, isn't it? Yeah. So now Including the backpack, this bus can drive over 240 kilometers easily with economic driving and uh, good weather conditions. Hey, what's interesting at this back side? Uh, at Rebel, we always try to keep 100% of the functionality of the car. This is why there are here no charges, no DC DC converter, no connection boxes, no main switches whatsoever, cabling. Nothing. Here under the front seat are three single phase chargers. So together they act as a three phase charger. The three of them are capable of charging 7.5 kilowatt per hour. So this means that this bus is from totally empty to totally full in about 7 to 8 hours. Only, because it's a very, very big pack. Also we have found place for the DC-DC converter, for the main connection box, and the safety relay that you can't drive while the car is charging. This is all placed under the front seat and the front chair. Here we are with one of the most critical parts of an EV, the motor. It's very wise to think, think it over what you really want with your car, because this car is able to drive three hours on one battery load. But this is not what the manufacturers specify for a motor. They normally think that after one hour of driving, the battery pack is probably empty, so they specify the continuous power of the motor for just maybe one hour of driving maximum. So, in this case, with this car, it's better to uh, take an over-dimension motor and choose for forced air cooling, like this motor. This is in this case a Warp 9, but our experience is that it's a bit too light for this car. So we have to replace it in the future. What you see here is the fan for the forced air cooling. It blows the, the air through this hose onto the rotor. And here is the RPM sensor which was made by ourselves, the, the construction I mean, and this gave feedback to the controller on how many RPM the motor does. This motor has a maximum of 6000 RPM. Okay, what you see here is the solid on one controller. Um, it's able to absorb 300 kilowatt maximum continuous power. It has air cooled, it's uh, fin cooled, but we also use liquid cooling. As we said before, the car is able to drive at uh, three hours, for three hours, and uh, it also has more than 150 horsepower. So liquid cooling is a, is a wise thing to do. Here, is the, here are the hoses. Here's the heat exchanger for the cooling. Okay, we've showed you the car, just in general, and uh, now we are going to make a ride together with you. The silence of this car is so great. Yeah, lovely. But you don't realize that it's able to drive already. <laughs> 